New England, Mid-Atlantic area, in Atlanta and Jacksonville. So by the time we got up here, it was good timing because the reality of the clubs where they would say, yeah, um, you're doing this to get into the college that you'd want to get into. And yes, you get to play, but it's not for the money. And sure, there's definitely a return on the investment, but I think the, the best clubs are doing it right when they're saying, but look, you could actually get in. And I think people will say, well, how is how does that help? Is it rigged? And I'll just point out with uh, a daughter that just, again, a couple of years ago got into college, she had to compete not with the bar that if you're above it, you can be successful. She had to compete with that floating bar over. So what mix of kids decided to apply to this school this year? And that's the opportunity athletes have, which is, you want to go to a school where you can be a successful student athlete, but you can get in mm -hmm. because you don't have to, if you're just unfortunate, um, and I said, I'm awful proud of my oldest daughter. She made, she got into her group with the most competitive recruiting class they'd ever had. We didn't know that, but the deck was stacked against her before we even mailed it in just because of randomly what kids wanted to go there that year. And mm -hmm. My other kids, who could have a far less uh, impressive academic resume, but if they were a fit for lacrosse, would have a better chance at you know getting that that academic. And again, and where you are, USC, not a bad place to you know get a diploma from. Yeah, no, <laughs> and I would say every school is very very different in terms of the admissions process. So, you know, as players are going through that, I would ask each coach and be very diligent about sort of the information that that you you get because every school is very you know very 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 different well and what about oh no i got in because you're not talking about being an athlete or being a student it's student athlete that's very different um set of expectations on how you're supposed to be focused on and off the field um one of my daughters uh or back one early on as a freshman and sophomore, she had to start thinking about schools and she had gone to a few, there was some interest. And she said to me, I'm not sure I'd want to go to that school because I think I might want to enjoy college. That was the way she put it to me when she was, you know, 14 or 15. And her point was, um, that's going to be hard just to be a good student. And I mm -hmm. already understand from my club what it takes to be uh, a good athlete. Where, where do you, do you think that needs to be in the process and talking to these kids without scaring them to be a challenge? And, um, and how do you address that? You know, trying to be, you know, realistic, but encouraging to the, the kids you want to see at USC. Yeah, that's a good question. I think sort of that line is always a little bit, it's, it's hard because like you said, you want to put, players in the position to be successful, both on the lacrosse field and in the, and in the classroom. But I think, you know, with, and every school is different with this too, but, you know, luckily at USC, we get a lot of academic support for our players. So in my opinion, if someone is going to put in the work, they will be successful. Um, if they're not going to put in the work, it's going to be difficult to be <laughs> successful because it's hard. Um, classes are hard and, and they expect a lot out of you. But I think if someone is willing to put in the work, uh, they will be just fine because of the resources that we get and the academic support that we get. Um, and it's kind of similar on the lacrosse field. You know, I think that if people are willing to put in the work, they're definitely going to, they're going to get better. They're going to continue to get better. And hopefully that means they'll compete, you know, in the lacrosse field. But I do think, it's important both academically and athletically, like you said, you know, with what your daughter said, but what do you want? You know, it's, it's a little easier to talk sports, but, you know, do you want to go to a program where you're going to be an impact player right away? Or are you okay with really having to fight and, and potentially not getting that opportunity? You know, maybe in four years you might not get that opportunity because right now maybe you're a little, you know, behind the rest of the team. Or do you want – to go somewhere where you know, you know, you can be the top dog. And I actually met someone or talked to someone this summer who, very similar situation. She thought, you know, because it was this name school that she wanted to go there. Oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's an ACC school. I'm in, you know, no, no question. And she got there and realized 
it was going to take, you know, she just wasn't there, you know, and she ended up transferring because she knew she wanted to be the top dog. She has no problem saying it, which I love, um, you know, but she wanted to be the, the person and it wasn't going to happen on that first school. And she just said, I wish I, you know, had thought about that more leading up to it. I wish I kind of admitted to myself that that I wanted to be at a school where I was going to, you know, really be able to, you know, be this like the leader of the program where she ended up just kind of going for, you know, a name, so to speak, you know, above that. And so I think it's just important that these players and families, but everyone is, is honest with themselves, you know, as well as the club coaches and anyone involved. But, you know, honesty is the, you know, the, the biggest thing that you can preach of just be honest with yourself, with what you want. It's okay. Whatever you want is okay. If you don't want to play, that's okay. If you want to play, cl- like anything is okay, but just be really, really honest about what you want because it's going to make you happier in the long run. Yeah, and my comment right now, like you're, you're talking to players, give them that confidence to be honest, but I'm going to speak now to my people, the parents, which is we want so much for our kids that we don't want them to be afraid to reach further and further and further. But at the same time, if it's not the right timing, you know, to reach for the highest they can, if we can still make this process be what later on, whether it's in college or in the job, these are still the same building blocks that say, yes, now I'm ready. I know what I went through, you know, as a high school athlete. Um, And I wasn't ready then, but I'm ready now as, you know, a 26 year old who says, wait a second, I'm not afraid, you know, to go get something. And that's the, I think it's the ultra hidden agenda from sports, but it really is not what they do when they're 15 to 20. It's, I think it's more, you know, 25 to 35 with their lives. Oh, definitely. And there's, I mean, so often you have players who come back and say, you know, kind of say just that. Oh, I didn't realize, you know, during, you know, during my four years that like, that's what you were trying to get me, you know, (laughs) to, to do. And like, it just hits me or, you know, thanks for making me show up on time for practice or a few minutes early because, you know, work, there's people who show up 10 minutes late and they get yelled, you know, just silly things. But it's just funny when you see the student athlete sort of when it all comes together for them and, and they sort of realize that these lessons just go far beyond the lacrosse field. Yeah, and people say, well, you know, you've only got X number of games. We've only got X seasons left, you know, years in high school, college. And, well, actually, you don't. We have as much time as we need. And, you know, if you're trying to fulfill some prophecy in those short windows, for some people, if it's a match, if they're aligned with the, you know, with what they want to do, it's going to look easy. I mean, it really will because it's what they want. But for others that just need whatever time to figure it out, like for me personally, I just wanted to be a baseball player. But it wasn't for me. I was, I had a lot of things to work through, to be quite honest, when I was in high school. And it was when I was 37. I went back and said, you know what? I think I'm over whatever was bugging me. And I, I laugh. I tell people I did everything my high school coach told me I wasn't capable of doing <laughs> when I was 37 as opposed to 17. Um, mm-hmm. I hope people can do this with less than a 20 year layoff. Um, but it was really stuff that I just worked through just a level of confidence. And, you know, I did it for a few years after that, but I probably had more fun with those old guys, uh, those three years than I did my entire high school career and that should be the opposite that really should have, my high school you know should have been the best and it turns out that uh the best fun i had in sports in high school i'm still friends with those guys that was probably the least competitive <laughs> win loss or win column successful teams and we just 10 minutes ago before we started talking we were still texting these are guys since i've known since i was 12 because it was there. We knew what we accomplished. It was all about helping each other, all the things you open the show with. And that's what um, I love about the opportunity to be college athletes is is that bonding. Um, well, yeah, and I think what you just said, though, too, sort of it's important to, to note, and I think everyone falls in this trap. I know I do, too. But, like, it's not an end result. You know, if we're talking about recruiting, you know, it, it, it's not an <laughs> end result game you know i get recruited and that's it that's like borderline the start of it you know it's it's not sort of this 
this journey that has an end point, you know, especially with recruiting, it's okay. You know, now I decided where I want to go. Okay. Now what's next, you know, and it sort of should always be like that. You know, it's not sort of, okay, I played four years of college done, you know, now it's over. It's okay. You know, you still have those relationships with people. You still are part of the program. And I think, you know, especially with recruiting process that we're focusing on, I think it's important to note that, that it's not this end game, you know, sort of thing. It's it's this journey that doesn't certainly does not end once you, you know, make a commitment or start, a, you know, communicating with a coach. I think that's really important to note. Yeah. And I going back to we'll just talk in terms of graduating class. I would say from what I saw when things really spiked um, for probably the high school graduating class of 2018, 2017, um, you know, when they were kids before they had actually showed up to high school, had made their verbal commitments. I, f I didn't see it firsthand, but in just talking to parents, just saying, yeah, some of those kids were kind of having a rough time. They're going to do just fine. But I think just wrestling with, oh, I'm done, but now I have to wait. Because they were given what they wanted so early before they knew what it was, which is they're, I mean, they're going to have a great opportunity to go to great schools, you know, and, and compete. And they're, and they're going to have the talent to do that. But that's a lot to tell a 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you did it. But not really. We'll tell you when it's ready to start again in three or four years. That's, it's, that's just, we're not built to go idle like that for something so intense. And that's why I, I, I really, again, I'm so thankful for just putting this little pause in the process that the kids are going to be playing just as hard. I'm just as happy to be quite honest to, you know, keep taking my kids to these events. Cause for me, that's a vacation. It's just a blast to just stand there and see all these, these young women playing, competing, laughing in between games. Um, mm -hmm. But knowing, yeah, it's okay. If you screw up today, you could screw up big time and guess what? It just, they shake it off. Um, so, again, I'm just a very grateful parent, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, those listening here will recognize that uh, we have someone who is uh, not only a, uh, a top-notch athlete and player and coach, but, um, you know, clearly you, you've shown that had you never, um, I guess, reached these heights, Sports, when done the right way, still would have taken you further than you would have gone otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, I want to ask you one other thing here um, sure. before we wrap things up. And again, we'll continue the second half of the show uh, with uh, uh, Haley. Well, she'll be coming on from inside lacrosse to talk about some of her experiences and things like that. But I want to ask you, um, as we close here, What's the most, let's say, memorable thing in sports that you've gone through? And again, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to talk a little more, let you think it up, but it doesn't have to be uh, philosophical. But what just jumped into your head that uh, you'll always remember? Ugh. It's hard. I know. It's so hard. Um, but I would say the most recent one, I'll give you the most recent Mm -hmm. um, the one, the USC related one. Um, but no, it's funny when people ask that, um, you know, starting a new program and just all of the things that go along with that, which there are plenty of, you know, funny memories and just, you know, just comments that the girls still remember that, you know, I say like, okay, you have one week to be a freshman. And like, <laughs> that was it. That's all we allowed them. Um, but after, you know, the, so it was two years, two years ago, um, we were in the elite eight at uh, Syracuse. And so it was the first four years of the program, you know, the fourth year. So it was just, you know, every player who had been in it uh, from, from the beginning with us, um, we actually lost in overtime. Um, and it's, so it's weird to say you're, you know, a, one of the greatest memories is, is a loss. <laughs> so, um, because, Clearly, I still think about that game and what I could have done and the changes we would have made. But just at the end of the game, being with that group um, was just really, really special. It was girls, like I said, who had been in it, you know, been had chosen to go to USC when there was not a program. We had never played a game or won a game or anything. And it was just 
just such an incredible, incredible group that believed in it from the beginning. 